It's time for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group with certified financial planners Kevin Corhorn, Mike Bernard, and Josh Gregory. Welcome to another episode of the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group, where every week we're helping you take your next wise step in your financial life. Thanks for being here, friends. My name is Mike Bernard. I'm your host. I'm also one of the certified financial planners on the program. And with me in the KFG studios, my business partners and fellow CFPs, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. The Secure Act 2.0 was passed nearly two years ago. However, many of the tax laws still have yet to take effect. What planning opportunities exist within this new law that will improve your tax picture, and how can you be prepared to capture them? That and more coming up on this episode of The Wise Money Show. You mean 100 tax law changes passed around Christmas didn't take effect immediately? Is that, is that what you mean? It's unbelievable. It's sprinkled out over a long time, isn't it? And the IRS, it, it, well, the IRS is still trying to interpret the rules and these financial institutions that have to then carry them out logistically, mm-hmm. they they can't pull it off, not in that timeline. So it, Congress almost, yeah, it's just, it, it's chaos. So, But there's planning opportunities. We, we can complain about it, and we, and we will, but this confusion creates opportunities because you now have more choice. We're going to help you with that right now. If you have a question for the, for the program or for us or have, an, you know, if you need tax planning yourself, you can reach out to us. Give us a call. Send us a text, 574-222-2000. That's 574-222-2000. Online, wisemoneyshow.com is where you can find us. Reach out to us there as well. Or all over social media, wherever you're, you're at, we are there as well. Search the Wise Money Show. All right, so it's fall. This is we're smack dab in the middle of our tax planning season. We've done some shows on some tax planning opportunities you need to capture this, this year. Tax planning is all about looking for opportunities for you to pay the least amount of tax over your lifetime, if not multiple lifetimes. Yes, that includes this year. So this fall, we're looking at, all right, well, should you do a Roth conversion? Should you make any changes right before the end of the year? Uh, You know, do any tax capital gain, harvesting, loss harvesting, that sort of thing. But then you also need to be proactive looking ahead a few years to say, well, out there in my retirement projection, what tax bracket do I think I'll be in? And what will my RMD look like? And therefore, should that influence some of what we do uh, today? So the SECURE Act 2.0, we already said, had about 100 different tax law changes in it. And those tax laws were set to go into effect in stages. A few of them took effect immediately, like the RMD change, the required minimum distribution change, which is now age 73. But others were sprinkled out to take effect at different time periods. And even though some have taken effect, again, logistically, you're not able to do them just yet. But what are some of those tax law changes that you now need to start planning for, whether they took effect this year and are soon to be rolled out, or what are some of the biggies starting in 2025 for next year? So, okay, that's what we're getting into. Love it. All right, first one is the biggest change within the SECURE Act 2.0, we've talked about it quite a bit, has to do with the 529 plan and the new ability took effect in 2024, right now, to transfer with some strings attached, money that's in a 529 plan to the Roth IRA. Yeah, it's a big deal. And this is something that you need to have on your radar if saving for your kids' education, their college education in particular, um, is one of your top goals. Anytime you're doing tax planning, it should be driven by the goals that you're trying to achieve. And that's how it gets worked into your entire financial plan. So if college planning is a big deal for you, this is one of your priorities and one of the things that you want to achieve in your financial life, you need to understand the 529 plan and how it is one of your very best tax shelters available for squirreling away money that can be growing for those college years and growing tax deferred, hopefully tax free, if you use it for college expenses. But if there's money left over at the end of college, then what? You know, in the past, you typically would just probably cash that account in if it was your last kid and you, you couldn't roll it down to another family member or anything. You, you would just cash it in, you would pay some taxes, pay some penalty on just the growth. No big deal, really. It, it might hurt your feelings a little bit um, to pay some extra taxes, but you benefited from tax deferral all those all those years. Now, 
not only can you roll it down or, or change the beneficiary on the account to be a younger sibling or another family member, but you also have the ability to use some of those formerly earmarked college dollars and turn them into retirement savings for the, the beneficiary. And this could be a fantastic way to help a recent college grad start funding a Roth IRA at the very beginning of their working career. And you, you think about the power now of, of using another tax shelter, one of the very best ones out there, the Roth IRA that allows that money to grow tax-free for decades. All right, so a few of the rules here. Uh, the 529 plan must be in existence for at least 15 years. And some of you are recently, you know, uh, aware of the 529 plan or maybe just recently started using it. So that clock is still ticking for you, but it's got to be around for at least 15 years. So your action item right now, if this is intriguing to you and maybe you've got a, a couple grandkids, but you've only got one 529 plan that you thought, well, maybe they'll share at some point, maybe consider opening a 529 plan for each of the grandkids or each of the kids so that you start that 15 year clock ticking. So that's your, or that's rule number one. Rule number two, your total transfers from, well, let's go here. The transfers from the 529 plan to the Roth, it has to go in that same beneficiaries, that same student's Roth IRA. This isn't, well, any leftover 529 plans I can transfer to my own Roth. No, unfortunately not. It's, it's for, that, for that student. The maximum that you can transfer over a lifetime, over that person's, that child's lifetime, is 35000 but then another rule, you can't do all 35,000 at once. These transfers basically take the place of a contribution that year. So right now the contribution limit for a, a, a Roth IRA is what? Seven grand. Seven right? grand. Mm -hmm. And so when your grandchild or child it starts working, starts their career, they would have the ability, as long as they don't make too much or their income's not above the limits, they'd have the ability to contribute seven grand to a Roth IRA. If you transfer seven grand from this 529 plan into their Roth, that counts as the contribution for that year. They wouldn't also be able to make a contribution. And then it it uh, it you know maxes out at, at thirty at thirty five thousand over someone's lifetime. And then the last rule, guys, or maybe I'm overlooking some, that you aren't able to transfer any dollars that you contributed within the past five years. So there's all sorts of strings attached here. And if you look logically, yeah, I, I, it makes sense. What they're trying to do is really carve out that, no, 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 you're using the 529 plan for college. Mm -hmm. But if you happen to have some left over, then we'll allow you to do this. Yeah, I, I, I would disagree with you, Mike, that it makes sense. And I would disagree <laughs> with you, Josh, that you should think about this if you're doing education planning. I, I think when you look at these, these tax shelters, you probably need to consider uh, funding them up to a certain limit that makes sense. So you, what's that limit? Well, if I lived in Indiana and paid Indiana state tax, it'd probably be $7,500. That's where I can get my credit up to. If I lived in Michigan, it'd probably be $10,000. What would I do if I lived in Florida or South Dakota or Texas or some of these other states that don't have a state income tax? I'm not sure, but there is there is a benefit because this this is this has become a little bit of a Swiss army knife mm -hmm. when it, it was originally 529 education purposes period if you don't use it for that you pull it out pay the pay the tax pay a penalty the tax deferral was is very because of the power of that tax deferral uh, mathematically you're typically ahead even after you pay the penalty so when you when you look at this uh, I would encourage people to in their financial plan to look at what they have whether I could be single and have no children. I could have a, a, a huge family. I could have a huge extended family. But when I look at the, the first dollar that I have to the last dollar, this the, the power in this is this these dollars are outside of my estate and I retain control over them. So it's, it is very, very unique in, in the characteristics of this plan and how I can use it and what I can. And now what I can use it for. And this is where, I remember early in my career, I had people putting $2,000 in after-tax Roth IRA. 
And their CPA said to me, don't do that. That just is going to create a hassle down the road. And then you know what happened in 1998? The Roth IRA came about, and we converted that money to the Roth IRA. Mm -hmm. So you never know when you want to be ready. I would I would be looking at, at all tax shelters. Yeah, and so you've got to consider this as a planning opportunity now, and, and, but... If you do so and you're not looking at all six areas of your financial life, you could make a mistake. We've got more coming up here on The Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Hello, YouTube. Thanks for being here. This is The Wise Money Show. What you're watching right now is our weekly one-hour talk show that airs right here on this channel, 10 a.m. Eastern Time every Saturday morning and also on podcast at the same time, but also on a couple local radio stations at the same time as well, which is why the content's broken up the way that it is. It's a talk show. However, on this channel, we've got... A, a lot of extra content, next Y step videos is what we call them, that air all throughout the work week, taking one financial concept, applying it directly to your financial life. We've broken down this 529 to Roth transfer, these rules, probably, I don't know, a half dozen times, talking about the different nuances, talking about, well, uh, the year that your child born, how much would you need to put in for them for it to grow to approximately 35000 so that you could then transfer that to their Roth IRA and what would that be worth when they turn 65? All that geeky math, if that's something you're into, figuring out how to take the next wise step in your financial life, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications here, no matter where, every time we drop new content. And if you like the content, like the content. We appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, so I, I think just a, a little bonus content here. Because the question is, who can be a beneficiary of my 529 plan? Right? My children. Spelled M I C H A E L P A U L. Yep. R O T A T H. Okay. Your children, your stepchildren, your grandchildren, your siblings, your parents, nieces or nephews, aunts or uncles, cousins, in laws, yourself. And. You can have non-family members as a beneficiary because you can name anyone, technically. <laughs> the issue with naming a non-family member is you have to be aware it may trigger some tax. That, that might not get you the get-out-of-jail-free card yeah. if you name someone else. Right. You wouldn't be able to then transfer it to a family member? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm, I'm saying if, it's, if, if there's just a, you know, if I just said Lindsay is, is my favorite person, um, she's going to be the beneficiary, and there's no connection whatsoever, mm -hmm. I'm probably going to pay tax I, on I, This is a long time ago, but I remember telling someone, listen, if you know, you could set it up as a scholarship for families at church, you know, someone in need. And I was like, there's a little complexity with that. And so in my mind, I'm like, I hope they don't do that because <laughs> we're going to need to figure that out, and it could create some challenges, but... But I, I think I, I think for the, the folks But you could technically. But for the folks that we're working with, this they should be fully funding these. Because they 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 have surplus. They have excess. And they're saying what what tax shelters and, and we've seen it. I mean we we have the five twenty nine plans that have a couple hundred grand in them. Yep. That that got there funding it five grand at a time. All right, let's pick it back up because we've got to talk about then, I mean, the craziness with the rules, you got to get past that. But then, hey, so have this on your radar screen this year. You Maybe maybe you weren't thinking this. Okay, so is that what we're opening with? Yeah. So right, do you want to talk about the areas of financial planning that this hits or not? Sure, yeah. This is, a, after all, mm -hmm. a show. Yep. It's not a show about 529 plans. Oh, it's Secure Act 2.0. <laughs> yeah, that's right, obviously. Okay. What changes within the Secure Act 2.0 are impacting your tax planning right now? Even if it's not something that you can do right now, it needs to impact your planning. So you're aware because your tax plan is connected to all six areas of your financial life. Ah, so exciting. We're going to get into all that. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being here. My name is Mike Bernard. With me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn. And Josh Gregory, every episode of The Wise Money Show is on podcast, wherever you listen. Just search The Wise Money Show, subscribe to it there, rate the program there as well. We appreciate it. And share it, right? There's, uh, this is a different perspective. Your certified financial planner should be giving you clarity and confidence with where you stand and where you are in relation to your goals. You're doing the right things. But also provide creativity 
different ideas, different approaches to consider to help you achieve your financial goals, maybe even even faster. Talking about right now, the Secure Act 2.0 tax law changes that should be infused in your planning. The biggie within the Secure Act 2.0 was this newly allowed transfer from a 529 plan to a Roth. I wish it was that simple. We went over all the rules last segment. I'm not going to go over all of them again. However, this now needs to impact your planning. Because of all those rules, even though this was officially law and allowed 1-1 of 2024, you can't do it yet. These companies haven't figured it out. All the red tape, all the logistics and 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 the tax documents. I don't know, maybe by the time you're listening, it's it's you know officially available. At the time of recording, it is not. So be aware so that it can influence your planning and so that you're ready once it is available, you're able to do so. Yeah, I think if you're if you're looking and saying, well, what what action should I take? I would sit down with my planner. Make sure your planner is certified because when you look at the six areas of financial planning, and if if you're if you're hearing this, you have six areas in your financial life, and the question is what areas does this impact? It impacts almost all of them. Yeah. But it definitely impacts my present financial position because what should I do with the extra money that's sitting in the bank? Do I let that sit in the bank for another year? Oh, and because at the end of the year, I can buy a smaller basket of goods and services than I could at the beginning of the year if I just let it sit there. So do I put that money to work for me? And if I do, where do I put it to work? And if you have surplus or excess, I would say you ha- this has to be a candidate. It has to be a consideration for tax planning because not only is do you get tax deferral with this investment, but you also... Um, either you, it's possible that you get a credit, which we love, or a deduction, which is a nice consolation prize. <laughs> so, but I, I, I would quite honestly, I'd take either one. I, those, each of those are 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 nice. And and if you live on the border and you pay tax in two states, you can you could get both. So when when you as you as you're looking at this, you say, well, what should it, what should I do as far as my tax planning? It sure factors into my. Yeah, how are you going to use? How are you going to invest these dollars? That you'll yep. have that choice. Mm-hmm. And if you're thinking, well, they're for college, that short term, you might not take as much risk. Nope, these are definitely going to be going to the Roth IRA for my grandchild. Let's have them and more a, a more aggressive allocation. Mm-hmm. You know, we're we're talking about leftover dollars or extra dollars that are in a 529 plan after the education years have passed. And you, you may say. Uh, I, I hadn't planned on that. I didn't know that I was going to have uh, up to $35,000 that I could transfer from a 529 plan to a, a Roth IRA. But you you stumbled into it. Maybe you got more growth in that account than what you ever anticipated. Maybe your son or daughter or grandchild ended up getting more scholarships than what you thought. Or, you know, more and more states are offering certain benefits through mm-hmm. community colleges and, and other programs that help to alleviate some of the cost of, of school. And so if you stumbled into one of these opportunities, um, you may completely miss it if you're not watching for it, right? Uh, you have to be constantly kind of head on a swivel, as Kevin often says, looking for the, the opportunities that come up throughout your financial life from year to year. And the only way you're going to recognize them is if you are proactively watching your financial life, especially through the lens of tax planning. And I would I would, I would, would tweak what you said just a little bit, Joshy, because you said, hey, these are education dollars that were left over. And it's not that. I'm talking to the 50-year-old. And, and um, when, when Hemingway was asked, how did he uh, go broke? He said, gradually, then suddenly. And we work with a lot of folks in their 50s and 60s that, that did the opposite of going broke. They, they, they got rich. Yeah, accumulated and, wealth. Yeah, and then and all of a sudden, and you say, well, how, they're, they're rich. How did they get rich? Gradually, then suddenly. I mean, it, it sneaks up on you and, and surprises you for most folks. So all of a sudden, you have to say, hey, I don't want to be like a general and be fighting the last war. I want to be fighting the war that I'm in. What am I doing? What am I doing with these uh, resources? If the sun sets 
at the end of next year and I'm in a federal estate tax position, what should I do with these with my money? Because mm-hmm. one of the things I can do with my money is put in a 529 plan and get it outside of my estate. So not only and wouldn't that be awesome if those dollars helped seed the retirement plan and re- retirement contributions for my grandkids? I think mm-hmm. this, yeah, I would agree, Kevin. Absolutely, it's a use case for leftover college dollars. I think it's a greater use case because of these rules. For I'm looking at my overall net worth and and how much of my wealth I will use in my life, and I'm beginning to think where can I put it in a tax efficient way. Yeah, for leftover for, accumulated right. dollars. Yeah, and 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 now you're. That's why I keep talking about grandkids. I, I think it's a greater opportunity for grandparents mm-hmm. to uh, to to consider. So, anyway, work with your CFP. This is this is a strategy that is now on the table. It's com- it's it's complicated enough just to talk about, let alone make a decision on. Start that process now. Even though logistically, I don't think you're you'll be able to do it just yet. Hopefully soon. Start that conversation now. Begin the planning now. Yeah, you might not want to become an expert in 529 plans and how they work. You need to know they exist, and you need to know if you've got surplus dollars, you probably should be at least considering this as an option. Mm-hmm. All right, let's pivot. Let's pivot. Let's go to another tax law change within the Secure Act 2.0 that has already taken effect, but you're not able to do. There is a backwards way of doing it, which we're going to talk about, but... It requires a, a number one proactivity in your in your tax plan, but also looking at all six areas of your financial life because this one as well will impact almost every every area of your finances. And that is the ability to have your company match into your 401k go into the Roth side of your 401k. And guys, this was not prophetic in any way, but earlier in 2020 late 21, maybe early 22. I remember doing a, a, a wise money YouTube video where I was complaining about not being able to elect to have matching contributions go Roth. And then all of a sudden it's now part of the law and it's allowed right now. You just can't do it. I haven't seen it yet where a company, I think this one maybe you know, any day now, you'll be able to log into your 401k and be able to you know, click a button that says, I want my company match contributions to be Roth. What that means is those matching contributions now are taxable to you immediately in, in that year. And one of the first questions apparently has been ironed out. One of the first questions that we had was, okay, well, will you be able to increase your withholdings? Will they withhold for these through your paycheck if you're saying, no, these are going to be Roth? Apparently they will not. So you're going to need to figure out how you're going to cover the taxes on this. So they will automatically do it, but you have the power to always go adjust your own withholdings, yep. right? Yeah. Um, you you can work with your payroll department, and the, the the way you get this math right is in the context of a tax projection. So you and your certified financial planner, your CPA, you're running a mock version of your tax return to figure out if I were to make this election as soon as it's available on your plan, and the logistics are all worked out and everything. If you start having your employer match become Roth or after tax, you have to figure out how am I going to make it after tax? How am I going to pay the tax on that? And you may just need to withhold a little bit more. That's a tweak or a change that you can make proactively. But uh, getting getting the math right is not simple, and you, you certainly want to lean on your professionals around you to help with that. I mean, I, further, I mean, you need to do that tax projection to see, well, is this something you should do? Yeah, right. That's I mean, right. knowing whether I mean, it's a cool thing, and you might have heard us talk about the Roth a lot, and therefore you might just say, well, of course, I I need to do that. No, no, you need to work with your certified financial planner to see what makes the most sense for your for your financial situation. By the way, that's that decision is not set it and forget it. It could be a good idea this year. It could be a terrible idea next year, and you need to, need to go back to having those be, uh, be be pre-tax dollars or not taxable to you in the year that you receive the match. But even though this is a new law, we said it's not available, you can still pull it off. We'll explain how that more coming up on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. That actually worked out. Does that mean anyone's still listening? Okay, so, but... I mean, you have so we're we're going over the mandatory Roth treatment for high income catch up contributions. We're we're gonna go there. We're not we are not there right now. We're okay. talking about 
the having match. directing your company match dollars to the Roth side instead of traditional side. But there's there's not a lot to say about that one because it's I'll, just, I'll I'll finish it just by saying you can do a Roth conversion right now. Yeah, and then we'll get into the higher and, catch up and, contribution. And you have to encourage people to lean in because if you're an HR anything, you should be listening because you see of the new catch up contribution limits for the 60 to 63, mandatory Roth treatment for high income catch up contributions, yep. automatic enrollment and new retirement plans. And you say, well, that's for a new retirement plan. I don't have to worry about it. Look, there's something called a restatement. So every so often a plan is restated. And what that does is catches up the plan for all of the things. Oh, the pension protection, the pension protection plan act passed uh, after our plan was in effect. Well, guess what? When your plan gets restated, it's yeah, it's going to get into compliance right. with those rules. But, but Mikey B, the thing that I was talking about uh, on the 401k show, the emergency savings account linked to retirement plans, I, st- I actually still think that's a good idea if it gives someone confidence to play a different game. I hate, I hate that idea. Mm-hmm. I, well, I do too. I do too. But I, but I love the idea of winning, and so there you go. Uh, and student loan matching contributions. We were just asked about this for a retirement plan. So and yeah. Oh, go ahead. Well, this show is about financial planning. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but the the sub direction within that is tax planning opportunities within the secure act so all of those things if we get to the fourth segment and we want to talk about them we can those are all like oh let me explain the secure act but the ones that are hey this is going to impact your tax planning or maybe could impact your tax planning this year i sort of cut it off Brilliant. at i know but we also can't say everything kevin so i cut it off we at a certain can. point if you... Because we've we've done, I think we've done two okay. other shows where we have talked about all those things: student loan matching contributions, and then the savers match. Yep, which replaces what, Joshy? I know, mm-hmm. I you you knew this and it left because yeah. I knew this and it left. But we're not talking about it because it doesn't start till twenty twenty seven, and I'm sure they're going to be pushing that one back. Well, because okay, because what I'm looking at says the uh, it's starting in twenty twenty five word but it could be wrong i'm 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 at a source that has to be questioned so give the answer what does it replace the savers credit a retirement savers credit oh, savers so if you had a your, okay no so if you have a if, if you had a savers credit mm-hmm. you got this credit on your tax return right and you can go get your big screen tv yeah and now it's like an advance on it essentially n- now the it goes it has to go into, into your, a retirement plan right yeah. 2027. Mm-hmm. The new savers match isn't effective until 2027. However, I mean, I could even show you that and they could change it. I don't see how they move it up. I, I Even when this one came out, how are they going to do that? Right. And we should all be extreme. Like the government wants to put money into the your government's retirement government's going to make you. a deposit into you your retirement account. Well, which one? The one that I have at Fidelity or the one I have at Schwab? We shouldn't be afraid of AI. <laughs> we should be afraid of the government having that mu- having the ability to reach their tentacles into our accounts. Did you say? Yes, I said tentacles. Okay. So the savers match from the Secure Act 2.0 will be effective starting in 2027. Yeah, that's what you said earlier. <laughs> Thank you, Josh, yep. for having my back. So guess what? I got that from the same unreliable source that told me 2025. So just be aware. Yep. The same it's an unreliable source that <laughs> gave us the wrong... <laughs> Yeah. Oh my stinking. Yep. Okay. So anyway, we can. We're going in the third segment. So yeah. I wish I, we should have a count, like a counter or a tracker or something, right down. Wait, right down here. Odd or percentage chance of getting to listener questions. <laughs> Some shows will start at zero. Mm-hmm. This one, I we tried to talk. I it started at I think thirty percent. And what's that? Seventy. Maybe. But it's, clo- it's approaching zero. 
It's very close. Well, there's so much goodness in this. Who can plumb the depths of the... You, I know you guys want to go secure at 2.0. I, I just want to go financial planning. But Back to bed? <laughs> right. Yes. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Third segment. Big changes. Big changes coming up to your catch-up contribution. You need to be aware of right now because it could impact your tax planning, your cash flow, your entire financial life starting in just a couple months in 2025. We're helping with right, with that right now. This is the Wise Money Show with Cohorn Financial Group. Thanks for being here. My name is Mike Bernard. With me in the KFG studios, Kevin Cohorn and Josh Gregory. Stay up to date on all Wise Money content. Find us online, wisemoneyshow.com or all over social media, wherever you're at. We are there as well. Search the Wise Money Show. All right, we're talking about Secure Act 2.0 tax law changes. Not all 100 of them. Kevin wants to hit all of them. I don't think we'll be able to. Specifically, we're trying to narrow it down to which are the ones that you need to have on your radar screen right now. Because either they're already law and you can't do them just yet, but you'll be able to do them soon. If that's the case, you need to consider, well, should I start uh, you know, positioning myself for this? Or what are the changes that are about to take effect that you need to start planning for? We left off on one of my favorites in the tax law change, and that is that you can soon elect your company match to be Roth. It's it's law now. You can do it, but you can't do it because no one's figured out logistically the button that you need to click and then how it's going to impact your W-2 and your paycheck and all that. So while you're waiting, if if you heard about this rule and said, well, yes, I'm early in my career, or I think I'm going to be in a higher tax record out there in the future, or no, I just love the Roth. I want to have my my employer match go Roth, and I can't yet. Oh, so frustrating. No, there's a workaround. We've shared it before. Right now, we're near the end of the year. It's fourth quarter. Go into your paycheck or go into your 401k. Either, either way, and just look at how much company match have you received thus far year to date. And then do an in-plan Roth conversion of that amount or, or calculate what you think the, the, the full year company match will be and do an in-plan Roth conversion of that amount. You're still gonna need to figure out, well, how am I gonna cover the taxes? This is gonna show up on my tax return, so uh, hopefully I'll I'll increase withholdings or this will eat into my refund, whatever. But you're able to do this additional step of doing a Roth conversion in the amount equal to your company match, and that effectively does the same thing. So hopefully, Starting 1125, most companies will have this feature available within their 401k. But even if not, there's your workaround. Good? Love it. Mm-hmm. All right, here's the biggie, guys. Of all these tax law changes that I've said, hey, this is now law, you're probably not going to be able to do it yet. I actually think this one, this one's supposed to be rolled out, 112025, and I actually do think it will be on schedule. Could be wrong. We'll see how this ages. But. It has to do with your catch-up contribution. When you are, specifically to your 401k, or when you turn 50, the year you turn 50, you can do a catch-up contribution. And now with this new law, there's a new tier at a new age. Josh, explain the current catch-up contribution, and then we can get into this confusing change. Yeah, it, it is confusing. It'll give you a headache, and it makes you shake your head a little bit. Like, Congress, what are you doing? I yeah. I understand the the eagerness to make it easier for uh, uh, Americans to save for retirement, and that's what a, a catch up contribution does. We've had that for a number of years. When you reach age fifty, you can uh, use the last years of your working career from age fifty on to contribute more. Um, conceivably because, well, maybe you hadn't been on pace for your retirement goal. And so this allows you to catch up, as the name would imply. And uh, the the way that works is an extra $7,500 this year can be contributed to your 401k or if you have a 403b uh, working for the schools or a hospital or another nonprofit or something, those rules are the same. An extra $7,500 when you reach age 50. Now, when you reach age 60, the year that you hit age 60, the the catch-up contribution gets another boost and it's a strange calculation it's meant to be one that will grow over time with inflation and it essentially says that you can either do uh well it's basically 150 percent of the prior uh catch-up contribution limit so that 7500 dollars number that i just said 
Well, 150% of that is 11,250. So at age 60, you get to jump all the way up to 11,250 as an extra contribution. This is above and beyond the amount that everybody gets to contribute Mm -hmm. to their 401k, okay? This is 23,000. 23 grand, that's right. So this is an important thing to have on your radar because if next year you're reaching age 60 and this law stands, you may be on pace to contribute the same $7,500 extra above and beyond your 23000 So you, you might be on pace to do 30500 and you can do more. You have to make that adjustment with your, your payroll. You know, that doesn't just happen automatically necessarily. So planning ahead, this is where your budget needs to be updated, your cash flow and, and the contribution limits need to be achieved if that's one of your goals and you have the, the flexibility to pull it yeah, off. Yeah, let me bat a little clean up here because you might need to make that change with your payroll. You might be able to go online and make that at mm-hmm. the forum. Okay, it depends on how it's set up, but we've um, worked with folks and they've gone online, made the change, and nothing ever happened because they're, it's not integrated with their payroll. So it depends on your situation, um, but get with the right people. And if you if you're if you're if your eyes are rolling back in your head right now and you're starting to swallow your tongue and you're like, I, okay, I cannot take any more of this. This is all you need to know. If you or someone you know turns 60, 61, 62, or 63 next year, they need to be talking to their financial planner Mm -hmm. because there's an opportunity. And it's likely, um, I I love to predict things and then um, quite often be wrong, it's likely that the contribution limit for anyone to a 401k is going to be 24 grand next year. So you have 24 Mm -hmm. grand. And then it wouldn't surprise me. if the if the seventy five hundred stayed the same, if they do bump it, it would go to eight grand. Right. So you you just have to stay current with this these numbers and figure out okay if I've got extra dollars pooling up, should it pool up in my bank account, or should it pool up in my retirement plan? And there is some there's there's some real benefits to that happening. Mm-hmm. I, I want to point out one thing because you were very specific and very accurate on what ages this pertains to. Mm-hmm. You said age 60 through age 63, and mm-hmm. you didn't mention 64 or anything beyond, and that's because the rule reverts back. This is part of the craziness. Why at age 64 are you no longer eligible to do this extra catch-up contribution? It goes right back down to the rules that we've known known before. I, mean, I don't understand why. I mean, seriously, what? Like, whose idea? I, if you're listening, if if this was your idea in Congress, and you're listening, first of all, hi. But but second, you need like you need help. You need to go to, like lay on a couch somewhere no. and, and talk about your feelings to someone because they, they. What were you thinking? All of these changes. So all of these changes are nearly impossible. And so there are you. You have a record keeper. You have a. a third party administrator, you have a trustee, you have an advisor, you have all these roles related to a retirement plan. And they're saying, hey, there's this retirement crisis coming. And so we want to equip people to be better prepared for the retirement crisis. So we're going to make it so incredibly complicated. Yeah. No one can figure out what's going on. I mean, here's the thing. This is uh, this is a financial planner's dream, right? Or Because Financial planning is all about choice, and then doing doing that analysis to see well of these choices, which what's best for you. At the same time, you do have to scratch your head and say, well, I mean, if you're good, I I get the premise of increasing the contribution, the the catch up contribution at age sixty. Why revert it back at sixty four? Mm-hmm. That makes absolutely no sense, especially if the premise of the catch-up contribution is to give people an additional, more tax incentive to contribute more because they're behind in retirement. Well, I'm pretty sure people maybe feeling behind in retirement might need to work until 64 or 65, 66, 67. Mm -hmm. Like that's one of the clues that, yeah, I need to save up more. That's right. Is you need to work a little bit longer. And so anyway, don't, don't share our frustration in this. Um, it's just confusing, and I think that probably is going to cause some people to, to, to tap out. But 
I, this is planning, uh, or the, the schedule is that this is going to become law. This is going to be allowed 1-1 one, one of 2025. It's going to impact your cash flow. Mm-hmm. It, it will. And it's going to impact your tax planning. And it's going to impact your investment planning. It's going to impact your retirement planning. You might want to consider how it impacts your estate plan. This could impact your protection plan in your ability to qualify for certain benefits with your health insurance or planning for Irma out there in the future. This impacts your financial plan. You need to be working with your CFP on it right now. All right, we've got more coming up here on the Wise Money Show with Cohoran Financial Group. It's all the way to zero. <laughs> uh, nail in the coffin. No chance. Okay, so what's next? Well, uh, technically we we only have per so the, the schedule the um, the mandatory Roth catch up contributions. I don't take I don't think that takes the full segment. So Kevin, that probably takes half the time and then you can rip on hey, but these are some other Secure Act law changes that could impact you and just popcorn them until we run out of time. So if you still have that list, I think that's good. But I want to start with the mandatory Roth catch up contribution. Yeah. Which was supposed to start in 2024. It's now starting in 2026. And again, like when they delayed it, it was like, oh, we don't have to worry about that. It's 2026. Nope. That's a year from now you need to start thinking of this. Mm -hmm. I mean, can you imagine you you make 142 grand a year in salary and you say, I'm good. I can do it pre tax. And the last week of the year, your boss comes in and says, hey, Mike, we're giving you a $4,000 bonus. Yeah. How, how do you do that? Yeah. I think about the people. Between that, in January? Yeah, you, <laughs> how, how do they recharacterize that, essentially? Does it happen yeah. on your W-2? Do you have to sort it out on your no, tax return? I, I, I'm telling you. And then. No, no, no. It's, it's if you made 145 last year. It impacts your ability. So your uh-huh. income in 2025, that's why I wanted oh, to talk about it. Oh, it's based on the prior year? Yeah. Gotcha. That's why. So your 2025, the amount that you earn from your employer, it so, matters. So the, the, But I'm saying the 59-year-old who turns 60 in November of next year may not have the additional catch-up on their radar screen. I'm sure. I'm sure. And if they listened to that last segment and, and were able to follow, said, oh, yeah, OK, I'll do that. And then find out it's going to need to be Roth. So it's going to impact their cash flow even more because they were getting a deduction on those dollars. Mm-hmm. And now it's going to be after tax. So their take home pay is going to go down because the tax withholdings will go up. It's dude, all connected. Dude, there is so much work to do. It makes you want to take off my headphones and get to work. All right. You're, you're confident that was three seconds? Why? What do you think? I thought it was four. There's no way that was four. There's a 7% chance it was the fourth. <laughs> <laughs> I, we had been recording for like 45 minutes. I know. We had a big Long. break in there. Okay. So I've, uh, for my promos, I've promoted the website and I've promoted um, – Okay, so uh, the podcast. I haven't promoted YouTube. And we did the intro like seven times. So, yeah, As a very kind way, Lindsay, of saying, will you guys shut up and just start <laughs> recording? <laughs> yeah. yeah. My bladder's Heard you. feeling full. Yeah. All right, here we go. Four yeah. segment land on the plane. I promise. Thanks for being here. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. My name is Mike Bernard. With me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Every episode of the Wise Money Show, as well as a lot of other content, is on the YouTube channel. Go check it out. Go check it out. Go to YouTube, search the Wise Money Show, and uh, subscribe to it there. Because not only is every talk show there, but there's over a thousand videos of other content as well. Next Wise Step videos that take different financial concepts, applying it directly to your financial life, how it impacts all six areas, and how you need to approach it to to continue to build wealth and take take your Wise Step in your financial life. So go to YouTube, search The Wise Money Show, subscribe to it there, turn on notifications as well. We appreciate it. We're talking about the Secure Act 2.0 and the changes that are coming down the pike that you need to start planning for right now. 
And we just left off on a new opportunity. Start is supposed to take effect next year. By the time you listen to this, they may have already delayed it. That's why you need to be working with your CFP. That's why we always say that because, you know, it's, it's very possible this might not apply to your situation. But at age 60 and for ages 60, 61, 62, 63, there's going to be a new tier of catch-up contribution. You can do even more. If you're still working at age 64, it reverts back down to the normal catch-up of 7,500, could be eight grand starting next year. Here's another change that you need to have on your radar, even though they punted it, you need to have it on your radar in 2025. And this has to do with your, also with your catch-up contributions, but a restriction in the Secure Act 2.0 that's going to require certain people to have those catch-up contributions not go into pre-tax or Roth, whichever you decide is best, but make them, force them, make them mandatory that it be Roth. That's a whole nother level of complexity again, right? That's been kind of our complaint when we're talking about some of these Secure Act 2.0 uh, features and everything. But as Mike said, if your income goes higher than a certain threshold, and that certain threshold is 145000 that you've earned with your employer, then the following year, your catch-up contribution, if you're over age 50, catch-up contribution to that retirement plan has to be Roth dollars, which means you're going to be taxed on them before they go into the retirement account. It's not going to save you any money. At least the catch-up contributions won't save you any money in taxes in the year that you're contributing, like maybe you were used to if you had been used to using traditional contributions. This isn't the end of the world or anything. You hear us talk about Roth contributions in a positive light all the time, right? However, we always talk about it as decide which one is best for you, right? Make sure that you are reviewing your tax picture and decide, should I go the traditional route or the Roth route? And from year to year, that can change. You're going to lose some of that flexibility, some of that choice as it relates to these catch-up contributions if your income goes over 145000 And so this is something you need to know as you're going into the year 2025, because it's the income that you earn in 2025 that's going to determine whether this rule is applying to you in 2026. And sometimes you hear us talk about income, and that means a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. Well, is that adjusted gross income? Is that just wages? Is that, you know, what what is it? Um, in this case, it's just your wages, not your spouse's as well. And it's your wages from that employer. So if you are working two jobs and between your two, it's say you make 100000 at each, which my goodness, you're hustling. Good for you. And you're contributing to the 401k. Now you make over, you make $200,000. But you do not make over 145000 from one of those. So therefore you'd still have the choice. And again, I, I'm Josh, you framed it perfectly. This isn't this, this this isn't a penalty. Don't think of it as a penalty. It's a restriction. Still, I mean, contributing the catch-up contribution to the raw side of your 401k, that's great. Go go ahead and do it. I just would rather have the choice. Mm-hmm. And so so anyway, this was supposed to take effect 1/1 of 2024, but once again, um Congress sort of uh, wrote a check that the real world can't cash here. So they very quickly punted and said, there's no way we're going to be able to pull this off. We've got to, you know, let's, let's push the deadline out or the beginning date out until one, one of 2026. I'm going to go on record guys and say, eh, not going to happen. Not going to happen. You think the whole thing will be scrapped? I, I no, I, well, or it'll gosh, just that would be delayed great. again. I think it'll get delayed again. Mm-hmm. 2028 is my guess. I mean, do you think of everyone that needs to know and be aware of this? Yeah, the compliance with this. I mean, that that's it's easy to sit in a room and say, "Hey, what what should what could we do?" Well, let's come up with a arbitrary number of uh, 145 grand, and then okay, well, you know, if you can hop on one foot and yeah. hat your head and rub your belly, then you have to put it in after tax. I'm like, what? And 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 the fulfillment of this from a compliance perspective is almost impossible. Mm-hmm. And so you say, well, um, if there's any good news, it's going to force, um, it's going to force automations, and you know, an, technology is going to have to get way, way, way better. Yeah, I mean, but, 
because just think about this. You are unaware of this rule and uh, gosh, uh, good for you because you know we are we are deep into the weeds here. You're unaware of this rule and you log into your 401k and you, you know, elect pre-tax contributions. All of those for every 401k provider have to be grayed out. There's got to be some sort of calculation. How much did you make last year? And therefore, this feature that is available to everyone when they log in is not available to you. It's grayed out for you. Just the logistics of doing that for every 401k out there, I don't know, has to take an eternity. But then, Kevin, as you already mentioned, sometimes you some companies, they don't want you to change it online. They want you to communicate it to HR. Mm -hmm. Well, that requires your HR team to know. And last I knew, employers change jobs or employees change jobs. They start new jobs. What if this is a new person at your company and they didn't know? They are not aware of this rule and they just process the change. I, I, I just don't see even a year in a year. I just don't see how they're going to be able to do this. But you need to be planning. You need to be aware. Okay. Th does this impact your plan? Well, you might say, you know, till it, till I'm required. I'm going to be doing pre-tax. Okay, fine. That that that's great. But if you then are required, if they do pull this off and in 1 1 2026, it's it's going to force this change. It's going to impact your cash flow because now those those catch-up contributions are going to be Roth, which is going to mean more taxes will be withheld from your paycheck and that's going to reduce your take-home, potentially impacting your budget or your goal planning that sort of thing. And wouldn't that be happening sometime late in the calendar year for most people. Like when they hit the the base contribution limit, right now it's 23,500. Um next year maybe it's 24 grand. But when you hit 24 grand, that's when you're now into catch-up contributions, right? I, I actually Is that how it works or I is it actually, a percentage of each I one? I actually don't I, I don't know. So mm -hmm. let's I'll go on record and say I don't know. I actually don't think it works that way because you're applying logic and that that is that is the first mistake in understanding the tax code. Uh, do, say something that makes sense, and you're it's likely that you're wrong. I'm just thinking through. Like we've had clients in the past when the catch up contribution became a thing, a lot of times uh, their employer would cap them at the base mm -hmm. contribution and mm -hmm. not turn on or, or right. allow the yeah. the catch up contributions to keep going. But yeah, so I, I, I that that would. Um, that, that's for another show. So tune yeah, in to the Wise Money Show. We'll answer that question. Mikey B will answer that on uh, uh, yeah, next Wise Step video. So anyway, those are those are some of the big four Secure Act 2.0 changes that impact your tax planning right now. Kevin, you've got a list of other Secure Act 2.0 changes that are coming down the pike that you just need to be aware of yeah auto enrollment for new plans which means if you're starting a plan in 19 in 2025 or later you are going to do auto enrollment now the hr folks can really hate on this one because mm -hmm. if there's someone that says i will not put money into a retirement plan and they have to auto enroll them it's just a little bit of a hassle and but hey it, wait there's more you not only do you auto enroll you auto escalate until you get to ten percent. So, so your contributions start out at a certain number, and then they just keep on ratcheting up every year. One percent each year until it reaches ten percent. Mm -hmm. um, so, and that that is that's automatic. There's the emergency savings account, which I'm, um, I understand the utilitarian practical nature of that. Um, and, and, Purely, I'm not a fan, but I actually, I like it for the right person in the right situation. And then um, student loan matching contributions, which is if I'm putting money against my student loans instead of putting money into my retirement plan. You could still qualify for the match. I can still qualify for the match. Work with your certified financial planner. There's enough law changes here to chug a horse. You need to be proactive about your tax planning and you got to work with your CFP. That's all the time we have for today. We have a Josh Gregory, Kevin Corhorn, all of us at Corhorn Financial Group. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next Saturday for the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Securities offered through Silver Oak Securities, member FINRA slash SIPC. Advisory services offered through KFG Wealth Management, LLC. Doing business as Corhorn Financial Group. KFG Wealth Management, LLC and Silver Oak Securities Incorporated companies are unaffiliated.